that I want to put across to the young leaders in the room is about empowering yourself and how you empower people. And before we start, uh, I just want to get a bit of engagement from the Tafla um, students. Just take a second to think about empowerment and what it means to you. Just take a second. There are no wrong answers. And if you have an idea, feel free to share it with the room. Empowerment. What do you think of when you hear the term empowerment? Anybody? OK, I'll, I'll have to pick somebody then, at random. Deba, what, what, what do you think of when you hear empowerment? Support. Yes, support. May I? Freedom. Great. So, empowerment can mean many things. So, support, freedom, right? But um, have you ever wondered what really drives people to do more than what is required of them? Or to do things for the sake of other people? What really motivates people to do things outside of their job, outside of their salaries, right? One of the most fundamental aspects that good leadership drives in people is the willingness to contribute, right? Your willingness to contribute. This means phenomenal, phenomenal work comes when people have the passion and the desire to take initiative. Logically, the cure for powerlessness is empowerment. The cure for powerlessness is empowerment in all in, in what it embodies. However, there's a problem because empowerment doesn't exist in a box which everyone can pick at and use however they will. And neither is it scarce. It's not a scarce resource, uh, resource that leaders can hold on to like a precious commodity. Um, in order for you to empower others, one must be willing to lose some power themselves. It's a give and a take. In order for me to empower you, Debak, I must lose some of my own power. So I'm going to discuss empowerment with you in different themes. We're going to discuss the meaning of empowerment. We're going to discuss what it means to be empowered as a person. Um, how you can empower yourself, who is an empowered leader, how they empower people, why empowerment is important, empowerment in business, as you know, I'm an entrepreneur, and what it means to me in my business, and how my business empowers people in our community, youth empowerment, and we will conclude. So, The best way I could find to describe what empowerment means. Empowerment is the degree of autonomy and self-determination in people and in communities. This enables you to, be, to, be, to represent your own interests in a responsible and self-determined way, acting in your own authority. An authority or power given to someone to do something or the process of becoming stronger and more confident, especially in controlling one's life and claiming one's rights. I believe that everybody who signed up to be in the Taft Leadership Academy was looking for some sort of empowerment because you want to be a leader. Whether you want to empower yourself or you want to empower your community, you want to empower youth, women, and different themes, right? And one of the major um, key components to being empowered is self-confidence, which is a theme that we'll explore more. So personal empowerment 
is about taking control of your life and making positive decisions based on what you want. It's closely linked to attributes like self-esteem and self-confidence, like I said, but true empowerment comes when you convert your intention into actions. So, like, um, an example of that could be many of you wanted, were looking for an opportunity for leadership training. And um, you took actionable steps to come and be part of this uh, Taft Leadership Academy, to teach yourself the skills to be great leaders of tomorrow. That is a form of empowerment. You might think you don't have the power to empower yourself, but it starts from within you, taking those actionable steps to reaching the goals that you yourself set for yourself. Empowerment doesn't come from outside. It starts from within. And when you empower people, or you empower yourself, sorry, you empower yourself to empower people who in turn empower you. And that is an important concept that I believe every leader should understand. You lose nothing from giving. You only gain. Everybody you see on this stage has been empowered in some way or another, one form or another. And as you reach your heights in your career, in your life, and you achieve more things, you may or you may not intentionally or unintentionally realize how you impact the lives of other people. But one of your key values should be your impact in your society, in your business, in your family, should leave people or the environment you came from better than what you, left it, what you found it as. And the best way you can do that is to empower the people around you. How do you do that? How do you empower yourself to empower other people? It starts with your attitude. You have to have a positive attitude. You need to develop a positive attitude to everything you do. You be, need to be able to set your goals, responsible, reasonable goals. Right? You should surround yourself with positive people. I like to surround myself with people who motivate me, people who support me, people who critique me in a constructive way. I always try to protect my energy and the energy I let out. Because this shapes, your, env your environment shapes you. And if you're in a positive environment, you'll have positive results. Um, you need to be assertive. You need to be assertive in what you believe in. You must be self-reliant. You can't empower people when you're reliant on other people. You need independence. You need to be independent. You need to be accountable. You need to take initiative. And most importantly, you need to have drive. So that's empowering yourself as an individual. But what about people who empower others? What is an empowering leader? Which is what we're all thriving to be or else we wouldn't be here today. What is an empowering leader? Tough is an empowering leader. He empowered me to be on the stage today to speak to you so that hopefully I can empower you. So empowering leaders share power with their subordinates giving them decision-making authority. They also express confidence in their employees and their abilities to perform the jobs autonomously. Now, as a business owner, this has been something that I have struggled with, I will not lie. Having the confidence in my team to work autonomously outside of me. This is, a nat this is natural for everybody. Then I look at Business owners that I look up to, like tough, undeniable leaders, and look at their organizations and realize that everybody in their organization is empowered to work autonomously. Everybody's empowered to grow, everybody's empowered to dream, everybody's empowered to think, and it reflects in the business. And 
that comes from decades and decades of experience in leadership from a tough. So I've made it a conscious decision within my organization to empower my team. And yes, there'll be bumps on the road. Yes, they'll make mistakes. But that is what empowerment is all about. It's about allowing people to make mistakes and learn, to grow. And the results are direct, they're instant. Your staff, your team are more committed to what you want to do when they feel as though they have buy-in, when they feel as though they can take ownership of what you're trying to achieve. And it goes back to the first thing I said. It goes back to how do you get people to go over and beyond what they are required to do? The key ingredient is being empowered to do so, having ownership, being motivated to do so. So, how am I or how did Tough create this environment where everybody feels empowered? What lessons, what takeaways can we take from people like Tough? What am I trying to implement in my organization? The, one of the key things uh, is building trust. It is necessary that we trust others to complete specific tasks or own certain goals without much oversight. This is a constant thing that I'm battling with and I'm getting better with now. Allowing people to take ownership and trusting them. I know Taf asks for feedback a lot. He said it here. If he has an idea, he calls Sal, asks him his feedback. You need to be able to ask for feedback. You need to know, you need to have a sounding board. Don't be afraid to ask for feedback. Don't be afraid of what that feedback is going to be. It might not be what you want to hear, but it's what you need to hear. So ask for feedback. Offer instruction. Always be accessible to your team and offer them instruction in where, where they need it. Yes, we're talking about working autonomously, but we must coach the people who work with us. And they must feel as though if they're stuck, they have an opportunity to speak to you or anybody in the organization to get a direction of where, where they need to go. Show appreciation. Um, Uncle Tuff didn't speak much today, but every time he spoke, he was thanking somebody. He was appreciative. He's launching a book on his journey and his story, but he made it very clear that it was a team effort and he thanked the FIRE network. So you show appreciation. I can guarantee you the FIRE network will go over and beyond for Uncle Tuff because he's empowered them. They have empowered him. That's how it works. That is the currency of empowerment. Recognize your limitations. Uncle Tuff is a great builder. Sure, he's not a great book writer. Right? He recognizes his limitations. Right? So you must know what you're good at. You must know what your staff is good at, what they're not good at. Try to get the best out of them and try to get the best for your organization. You must know your limitations. All of these traits are clear in Uncle Tuff and other leaders in the room or outside. And I, my whole purpose of speaking here today is so that you can start recognizing these things in people and in yourself. So you can start emulating them. So when we young leaders can emulate these things that Uncle Tuff is doing, might be second nature to him now, but if we're conscious about it, it will lead to a society of leaders that are pulling each other up. Build businesses that create opportunities and empower other people, not just your staff, your supply chain, your customers. Maybe just a little background on my, my business. We, we have a business where we produce mangoes and we, we create them into mango chips. And um, for a long time, we were asked, why don't we create a mango brand? We usually sell our mangoes to brands to put them in their own, 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 own sachets. And we've been asked for a long time, and we tried, but it wasn't really our forte. 
and it forced us to have a conversation with ourselves about our purpose. Why did we start this business? Of course, everyone starts a business to make money. But one of the main reasons is we want to create opportunities so that if Debach wants to start a mango brand, he doesn't have to build a factory. He can buy the mangoes. That is a form of empowerment. You're reducing, reducing the barrier to entry for other people to get in the business and build the value chain. And this exists for every business. I went to Taft City and I saw people, a, a small business manufacturing bricks. It's the same thing, the same concept. Your business should empower the community around you, not just your staff, suppliers, people, people within the community. You might not be aware that you're doing this. That's why I'm here to speak to you about it, because we need to intentionally start doing these things, empowering people around us. And it works for your business. Sorry. So now we'll talk about why uh, empowerment is important. A, a quote, does everybody know who um, Bill Gates is? Everybody knows who Bill Gates is, right? Okay, does anybody not know who Bill Gates is? You in the back, you don't know. You know? You don't know. Okay, Bill Gates is the founder of Microsoft. Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, and he's credited as being one of the most brilliant people of our generation and one of the richest men in the world. And he was asked, what is the next generation of leaders going to look like? And his answers was quite interesting. He didn't say it were politicians. He didn't say they were businessmen. He said, as we look ahead into the next century, leaders will be those who empower others. Very simple. Why is that? Why did he say that? We've moved away from an age where knowledge, access to capital, these things were centralized. And if you had the knowledge, you could lead masses of people. We live in an age where this is democratized now. Knowledge is democratized. You only have to go in your phone and Google something and you'll get the answers. So you don't have a situation where populations just lead, uh, just follow anymore. You have a population where everybody is armed with the same information. Who leads those people? You're leading empowered people. But what people like Bill Gates understand is that the tide is shifting from autocrats to a highly interconnected world where leaders main job is to empower you and empower the masses. In the next hundred years, we're not going to have demagogue type figures. Have a room full of leaders like we do today. And I think Uncle Taft knows this. This is why all of you are here today. So what else? Why is it important? We already talked about um, people exceeding their expectations your expectations of them and theirs. And it also makes people mindful. Now, if I know that um, my role in my company now is to make sure that I'm empowering all my staff, I'm going to be more mindful about how I act and how I treat my staff and how people perceive me. And if that is replicated throughout your organization, people will be a lot more mindful about how they act. And I've seen this firsthand. So we know leadership and empowerment, sorry, paves the way for future leaders. When you prime others, you're transferring authority and knowledge to them. You're allowing them to share the load, giving them the opportunity to lead themselves, this fosters an environment where people can understand their successes and learn from their failures, an environment of trust. Now, 
I know most, uh, just by a show of hands, how many people in this room are venturing into entrepreneurship or would like to venture into entrepreneurship? How many of people in this room want to be business owners one day? So I would say 80, 85% of the room. So um, being a business owner means by default you have to be a leader. And in Gambia, I find from my experience, motivating your employees and your staff is a major, major hurdle. But the onus is sometimes on us, the entrepreneurs, where we overlook what motivates people. We think the salaries motivate people. We think that the fancy suit and tie motivate people. But we often overlook that giving people that ownership that we talked about earlier is what is going to motivate our staff to go over and beyond for us. Ownership motivates people. Dignity motivates people. And a simple tool as an entrepreneur you can use is your ability to empower your staff to do what you want them to do. And I guarantee you they'll go over and beyond for you. So um, with that, I would like to end this, actually no, one more theme of empowerment. We all hear about youth empowerment. I cannot come up here and not talk about youth empowerment. But I feel like that conversation is lacking a little bit of a context sometimes, and it's become a bit of a buzzword. And since I think I have, I qualify one more year to be a youth, I think next year I'm over the UN mandated youth. So I, I, I think I have authority to speak <laughs> as a youth. So I'll take the opportunity. What does youth empowerment mean? It means including youth in the decision-making process. That's the reality. I believe that we have a lot of youth empowerment programs in the Gambia. We have a lot of youth empowerment initiatives in the Gambia. But how many youth are actually involved in the decision-making process? Are the youth really empowered? Are we? It's a question, I don't know, I just, just think about it. Um, it means to honor the youth's voice. To understand and implement, implement their honest opinions and ideas. Be willing to share your adult power and privilege in order to make the community a better place for both young people and adults alike. Young people not only represent the future of our country, but young people are one of the society's main agents of progress. You, the youth, have a great effect on economic development and in culture. It is in this stage of your life you will build many social relationships and develop a personality that defines the new generation. I think young people need to be empowered to understand their power, their relevance, and their importance in the country. Apart from all the programs that are availed to you, I believe it's time that young people are involved in the decision-making process, are involved in politics. We do have a few um, shining stars somewhere in the room today, young people who have taken up that mantle to go into, the, and go into politics, go into government, go into business, and make sure that they are part and parcel of the decision-making process in the country. Because the reality is, all decisions made on your behalf affect you in the future, not those making the decisions for you right now. So if we are serious about empowering youth, it cannot happen until youth empower themselves are in those rooms and make it mandate that youth are in those rooms when decisions are being made for youth. So
So to conclude, the reason we're here today is to launch Uncle Taft's book. And in that book, we can see Uncle Taft was empowered at a very young age by his mother, his sisters, his community, his teachers. Uncle Taft grew older, started his career, started empowering his staff, his colleagues, his suppliers, and his staff had children who further had children, and Tuff started to empower his grandchildren. That's where he is at life today. His life is a book, it's a journey that he has written by himself, and it should be celebrated. What journey, what life, what book do you intend to write in your career? What themes of empowerment are going to be left in that book? We're here today because you will shape the trajectory of this country and the world in the future. We, meaning Tough, myself, everybody on this panel, only hope that we can equip you with the tools and the confidence to empower you to lead your peers to a better future that you will shape. Nobody else, you. This is a sacred responsibility shared by leaders in all capacities. Just remember, in order to empower others, you must first empower yourself. Thank you. <laughs>